pondered life's questions and wondered, what happens to an egg in a vacuum chamber? Well, today we're going to find out. So today we're going to be continuing with vid busting, where we'll have a look at a number of different tests on eggs. So of course, later in the video, we're going to be seeing what happens when you put an egg in a vacuum chamber, both inside and outside its shell. Before that, we're going to have a look, can you cook an egg with a hand warmer? You know, the ones that heat up just from the air. Uh, and then we'll also look at what the best amount of time to hard boil an egg is. Is it five, six or seven minutes? So with that being said, let's get started with a hand warmer egg cook experiment. So naturally, the first thing we need to do is actually figure out how warm these hand warmers get. So we've got a thermocouple here set up on a multimeter. Let me just show you that. So we can see our ambient temperatures around 29 degrees Celsius. Let's get one of these hand warmers out of the packet here. Um, I'll explain to you how these work quickly. Essentially, the exothermic reaction produced to make the heat is an oxidation reaction. Now there's iron, essentially iron in there. And as the iron converts into iron oxide or rust, uh, it produces some heat. And that's what we're actually feeling uh, when we feel some heat from this. So I've got one here that I opened quite a fair bit earlier. That's mu much warmer than that one. Let's measure what our temperature is. Uh, in the middle of that. So I think we're looking for something around 60 degrees to cook our egg. Now one on its own might register slightly less than that, but if we can get multiple of them together and sort of create a chain reaction of heat, maybe it will get to the right temperature we need. So we're looking, I think, for around 63 degrees, at least to the center of our egg if we can. Um, and we're registering 52, so we can see the single temperature of one of these hand warmers is around 51, 52 degrees, which is quite toasty for your hands, obviously. But we need something a little bit warmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of pack seven of these around an egg, and hopefully that, that temperature uh, will be enough to actually cook the egg to the middle, but we'll have to wait and see. So we've got a whole bunch of these hand warmers here, and I can tell you these feel very warm. Now, this is much, much warmer than just one on its own. I definitely wouldn't suggest trying to warm your hands like this. There is the potential you can burn yourself. So with that being said, let's hopefully cook our eggs. Let's pick a nice looking egg here. So we'll pick that one, put them to the side. So let's start off by placing some of these hand warmers into our tin foil here uh, in the middle there. And we'll sort of place our egg inside all of that. Okay, let's wrap that. Oh, that's very warm. It's almost too warm to touch. Okay. So we can see we're measuring around 44 degrees in our hand warmer egg burrito here. Let's just poke some holes to make sure oxygen can get inside. Obviously, that's how the reaction works. Right, so while this is sort of cooking away, we're going to leave it to the side. Let's have a look at a few other egg-based tests and see what we can come up with. So for this test, what we're going to do is boil our eggs for five, six, and seven minutes and see which one gets the best results. So let's pour some water into our pan. So let's place our eggs in and start the timer. So while those are boiling away, I just want to show you our hand warmer egg is up to 70 degrees and it's almost getting too hot to touch in some areas. I'm very surprised how warm that's gotten. Right, so we're just coming up to five minutes. Let's grab our first egg out. It's very hot. Let's just write five minutes on the side so we know which one it is. We'll do a five. So let's start off with our five. See how well it comes out the shell. So I give up with peeling that. Let's see what the insides look like. It should be soft boiled. Very runny, you can see. So there's our five minute egg. Let's now look at our six minute. You can see not quite as soft as our five minute, but nicely softly boiled. That looks pretty perfect to me actually, if you look at that. So it's much easier to peel already, I can tell you. The firmness lets me pull off the shell very easily. Right, let's have a look inside. So that looks, again, that looks really nice to me. Nice and runny yolk, but not too soft. And it was relatively easy to peel. So I think seven minute actually might be the new winner for me. I think six is slightly underdone potentially. Finally, let's have a look at our eight minute one. And we can see that the yolk is in fact hard boiled. So, so in my opinion, seven minutes looks the best. I think eight's a bit too done and six might be slightly too underdone in the yolk, depending what you're going for. So if I was to boil an egg uh, and I wanted the most out of it, I think I'll go for seven minutes. That looks pretty good. Mm, very nice. So while we're still waiting for our hand warmer to cook our egg, let's do another egg experiment. What happens to an egg in a vacuum chamber? So to start off, let's just put a whole egg in, in its shell in our vacuum chamber. So let's turn the pump on in three, two, one. So not much has happened so far. Let's put all the air back in and see what happens in three, two, one. Nothing. Damn it. So the egg is completely normal looking. There's actually nothing sort of strange looking about it. Let's just crack it in there and see what it looks like. Yeah, nothing changed whatsoever. Very interesting. So now let's see what happens. We've got an egg in there without the shell. In three, two, one. Whoa, look at the cloud that it's making. That's crazy. All the air in the egg is coming out. 
That's what we're seeing with all those bubbles. Absolutely mad. Right, so I don't think anything else is going to change. Let's let the air back in and see what happens in three, two, one. Whoa, look at that. That's interesting. Some of the texture has changed here, but overall it's pretty much just the same egg. <laughs> So we've got an egg here that we're trying to cook with the hand warmers and we've reached 68 degrees Celsius. It was up to 80 degrees Celsius before. Let's just see what the egg looks like. Oh, that's, ah, that's so hot, I can't even touch it. That is actually incredible. Just from these hand warmers, we managed to make the egg hot enough that is, I can barely touch that. I think that's probably cooked. That is seriously, seriously hot. We're gonna have to let that cool down for a minute uh, before we actually eat it. That just shows you, you shouldn't, you've gotta be careful with these. If the temperature gets high enough then, you're definitely gonna get burned. Cause if that was my skin, that'd be pretty crispy at this point, to be honest. You'd have burned skin for sure. And if I brave the heat here a little bit, it's very hot, it's burning my fingers as I talk. Let's measure the temperature. And you can see it's around 67 degrees Celsius, 65 degrees Celsius. So if that is the internal temperature, this is a cooked egg. Let's have a look. Let's just open it up and have a look. Quite excited here. Even though I can see cooked egg, I'm now seeing what looks very gelatinous. Uh, not quite as cooked as I'd like that to be, to be honest. I know it's very soft and runny at the minute, but it still is a cooked egg, sort of. So it's sort of cooked, not quite hard boiled, is it? <laughs> and strangely, the yolk is cooked much, much sooner before than the egg whites, which is not typical, to be honest. So let's try the world's first egg cooked by a hand warmer. Let's get a bit of the yolk and a bit of the white. So there we go. It's not quite hard boiled, as I said before. Let's see what it's like. So what's quite interesting is it's kind of like a hard boiled egg and a poached egg combined. Uh, I've actually never tried anything like this sort of texture with a yolk that's that texture and then it's so hard on the, uh, with the egg whites that are this texture and it's so hard on the yolk. It's very interesting. It's not bad at all to be honest. And the yolk's cooked all the way through which is nice. Right, so we managed to cook an egg with a hand warmer, did some tests with a vacuum chamber and even found the best way to boil them. Who says we don't do it all? So as you know we post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday with these longer videos with all sorts in between anyway. So subscribe and hit the bell to never miss them. Also we've got some big plans coming so make sure to stick around to find out what that's going to be. So by far the best test today for me was the hand warmer egg cook. I'm genuinely surprised at that work. And in fact, how hot it got, I wasn't expecting that at all. That would actually burn you if you put them all together like that. So don't try that to warm your hands, only if you need to cook in an emergency. Uh, and it works quite well, to be honest. Getting something to like 86 degrees, which was the highest that we got to, uh, would certainly be able to, to boil an egg over a long enough period of time. I think you basically want to make sure that you cook it long enough uh, to get the center to the right temperature. But yeah, I think it, it, it certainly was viable and it certainly cooked the egg. Obviously, we just needed to go a bit longer. Um, yeah, quite interesting stuff, really. I was a little bit disappointed in the egg in the vacuum chamber. I saw a video by Cody's lab where he managed to sort of create sort of a freeze-dried looking egg. I'm not sure if he put that in a freeze-dryer or a vacuum chamber now. I'll have to double check. I'll link the video in the description to check him out. He's a great channel, uh, huge inspiration. So yeah, so with that being said, I think I'll finish on these words. Very cool. Yum, yum.